Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this beam using stiffness matrix method. Before analyzing, let us see the beam one time. In this beam, there are two spans, span AB and span BC. In the span AB, there is a point load 48 kN acting on the center. In the span BC, there is a uniformly distributed load 15 kN per meter acting for the full span. In the point A and the point B, there are hinged supports. In the point C, there is a fixed support. The span AB is 3 meter long and span BC is 4 meter long. In the point A, there will be no movement because it is a simply supported end. So, MAB is equal to 0. In the joint B, we have to find two movements, MBA and MBC. In the point C, there is a fixed support. In the fixed support, we will have a movement. Here, the movement is MCB. So, totally, we have to find three movements. MBA, MBC and MCB. Also, we have to find three vertical reactions RA, RB and RC. Now, let us calculate the fixed end movements. First, let us take the span AB. In the span AB, there is a point load 48 kN acting on the center. The formula for the fixed end movements are minus WL upon 8 and positive WL upon 8. After applying the values inside the formulas, we are getting M of A B and M of B A. Now, let us calculate the fixed end movements in the span B C. In the span B C, there is a UDL 15 kN per meter acting for the full span. The formulas are minus WL square upon 12 and positive WL square upon 12. After applying the values inside the formulas, we are getting M of BC and M of CB. In the stiffness matrix method, we have to check the number of supports in which slope can occur. Let us see the conditions. In the fixed support, there will be no slope. In the hinged support, there will be slope. In the roller support also, there will be slope. In this beam, in the points A and B, there are hinged supports. So, the number of supports where slope occurs is 2. In the point A, there is theta A and in the point B, there is theta B. So, in this analysis, the unknowns are 2. If we calculate these two unknowns, we can easily find the final moments. Now, let us make the fully restrained structure. In the fully restrained structure, there will be no slope. So, let us remove the hinged supports from the point A and from the point B and replace them with the fixed supports. Right now, in this beam, there will be no slope because all of the supports are fixed. That is why it is called the fully restrained structure. We have made the fully restrained structure. Now, let us make the coordinates diagram. In this analysis, there are two coordinates. In the points A and B, we are having the coordinates. Because in these points only, we have slope. The coordinates should be made in the clockwise direction. We know the formula to calculate the slope values. Delta matrix is equal to K matrix inverse into P matrix minus PL matrix. In this formula, first let us find PL matrix. We know that PL matrix is the moments developed in the coordinates due to the given load. In this analysis, there are two coordinates. In the point A and in the point B, we are having the coordinates. In the point A, we have calculated a fixed end moment, M of AB. 
let us apply that in the point B we have calculated two fixed end moments M of BA and M of BC let us add both of them after adding we get minus 2 inside the PL matrix we will have two values because in this analysis there are two coordinates in this formula now let us make the P matrix same like PL matrix inside the P matrix we will have two values but both of the values are zero because there is no overhanging in the given beam in this formula now let us find the stiffness matrix now let's see how to calculate the stiffness for calculating the stiffness we have to apply unit displacement in every coordinate then we have to use the formulas if the fair end is fixed the formula is 4 ea upon l if the fair end is hinged the formula is 2 ea upon l now let's see the size of the stiffness matrix for three coordinates the size will be 3 by 3 for two coordinates the size will be 2 by 2 for one coordinate the size will be 1 by 1 in this analysis there are two coordinates so the size of the matrix will be 2 by 2 now let us make the first row in the stiffness matrix for that we have to apply the unit displacement in the first coordinate in the point A there is a fixed support but when we apply the unit displacement in the point A it is no longer a fixed support it becomes a hinged support now let us see how to draw this slope curve we are applying the unit displacement in the point A so from the point A we have to make a clockwise curve towards the point B and we have to see the direction of the arrow this arrow indicates downwards so we have to make the curve below the span in the fixed support there will be no slope so we have to give some gap between the slope curve and the fixed support you can see that I have given some gap that is why the slope curve ends before the point B and cannot continue after the point B the stiffness values should be calculated in the order first from the first coordinate then from the second coordinate now let us calculate K11 for that from the point A we have to look on both the sides on the left side there is nothing on the right side we are having a fixed support if the fair end is fixed the formula is 4 EA upon L length of AB is 3 let us apply that now let us calculate K12 for that from the point B we have to look on both the sides on the right side there is no slope curve if there is no curve there will be no stiffness on the left side there is a hinged support if the fair end is hinged the formula is 2 EA upon L length of BA is 3 let us apply that now let us find the second row in the stiffness matrix for that we have to apply unit displacement in the second coordinate that is in the point B in the point B there is a fixed support but when we apply unit displacement it is no longer a fixed support it becomes a hinged support now let's see how to draw this slope curves from the point B we have to make two clockwise curves one towards the point A and one towards the point C then we have to see the direction of the arrows using the direction we have to draw this slope curve now let us calculate K21 for that from the point A we have to look on both the sides on the left side there is nothing on the right side there is a hinged support if the fair end is hinged the formula is 2 EA upon L length of BA is 3 let us apply that 
Now let us calculate K22. For that, from the point B, we have to look on both of the sides. On the left side, there is a fixed support. If the fair end is fixed, the formula is 4EA upon L. Length of BA is 3. Let us apply that. Now let us look on the right side. On the right side also, there is a fixed support. So, we have to apply the same formula 4EA upon L. Length of BC is 4 meter. Let us apply that. For K22, we have to add these two values. After adding, we are getting 7EA upon 3. In the stiffness matrix, we have calculated both of the rows. Let us apply the values. EA is constant. Let us keep it outside. In this formula, we have calculated everything. Let us apply the values. Let us add these two matrices. After adding, we are getting this. EI inverse, we will get 1 upon EI. For this matrix, we have to find the inverse. We can apply all of the values in the calculator and get the inverse. Then, we have to multiply these two matrices. After multiplying, we are getting the slope values. Theta A is equal to 15.25 upon EA. Theta B is equal to minus 3.5 upon EA. Now, let us apply these values in the slope deflection equations and find the final moments. First, let us make the slope deflection equation in the span AB. No need to make the slope deflection equation for MAB. We know that it is zero. Only make the equation for MBA. Here, let us apply the fixed end moment which we calculated early. Length of AB is 3 meter. Let us apply that. After applying the values of theta A and theta B in the equation, we are getting MBA. Now, let us make the slope deflection equations in the span BC. First, let us make for MBC. Let us apply the fixed end moment. Length of BC is 4. Let us apply that. In the point C, there is a fixed support. So, there will be no slope. Theta C will be 0. After applying the value of theta B in the equation, we are getting MBC. Now, let us make the slope deflection equation for MCB. In this equation, let us apply the value of theta b. After that, we are getting mcb. In this analysis, we have calculated all of the moments. In this analysis, we have calculated all of the moments. Now, we are going to calculate the vertical reactions. First, let us take the span ab and calculate the vertical reactions. In the span ab, there is only one moment. MBA which is acting in the clockwise direction. By taking moment about B, we can calculate RA which is equal to 16.17 kN. By applying the rule summation of vertical forces is equal to 0, we can calculate RB1 which is equal to 31.83 kN. Now let us take the span BC and calculate the vertical reactions. In the span BC, there are two moments. MBC, which is acting in the anticlockwise direction, and MCB, which is acting in the clockwise direction. By taking moment about C, we can calculate RB2. By applying the rule, summation of vertical forces is equal to zero, we can calculate RC. In the point B, we have calculated RB two times. Let us add them. After adding, we are getting RB, which is equal to 63.14 kN. Now, we are going to draw the shear force diagram. Before drawing the diagram, let us calculate the shear force values. I am calculating the values from the point A and towards the point C. In this case, I am moving right hand side Upwards will be positive and downwards will be negative. Using the concept, I have made the values. 
Using the values, we can make the shear force diagram. Now we are going to make the bending moment diagram. Before making bending moment diagram, let us make the free moment diagram and the end moment diagram. For drawing the free moment diagram, we have to assume every span as a separate simply supported beam. In the span AB, there is a point load acting on the center. The formula to find the maximum bending moment is WL upon 4. Using the formula, we are getting 36. In the span BC, there is UDL acting for the full span. The formula for the maximum bending moment is WL square upon 8. Using the formula, we are getting 30. Using the end moments, we can make the end moment diagram. Then we have to combine the free moment diagram and the end moment diagram. So we will get the bending moment diagram. Now we are going to end this session. Thank you for watching this video.